I became a data analyst in three months. I graduated from university in July of last year and landed my first role in September of the same year. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you how I became a data analyst in those three months. Hey everyone, my name is Junaid and I'm a graduate data analyst working for a financial services firm in central London. I've actually made a video about how I became a data analyst, but in this video, I'm going to go over what I did on a weekly basis to actually land the role. Now, my background wasn't from data, I did a degree in finance and actuarial science and spent most of my summers doing internships at investment banks. What those experiences did help with were the transferable skills I was able to learn about the processing and handling of data. If there's one thing you take away from this video, it's the fact that you can take experiences you've had and apply them to really, really niche scenarios in almost any job. In my interview for the job, I remember I had to give an example of when I'd gone above and beyond for a client, uh, shown exceptional customer service or something like that. And the example I ended up using to demonstrate that was from my time as a sales assistant at a suit store, Moss Brothers. And ultimately that went down quite well because it not only validated my ability to deal with important clients, but also helped to highlight a previous experience I'd had where the client comes first. So that particular example had nothing to do with data or finance, but in the interview environment I was in, office attire is a central part of the workplace. And after I brought that experience up, we had a three minute discussion about the difference between fully lined and half lined suit jackets. Now, let's dive into the video with the technical skills I worked on. So starting off with technical skills, I needed to be able to set myself apart from as many applicants as possible. And I knew that no one would hire me if I couldn't work with data and basic data tools and software. So my plan was to learn a little bit about everything with a focus on Excel, Power BI, Python and SQL. So I dedicated three days of the week honing and working on my technical skills. Now those four that I mentioned would be my strengths, Excel, Power BI, SQL and Python, but I was also actively learning all of the most prominent industry tools, MATLAB, R, Tableau, VBA, etc. Now, don't get me wrong, I was just learning the basics of all of those tools other than the four I'd chosen as my foundation. Now, there were two reasons that I ultimately learnt a little bit of everything. One, the idea was I'd confidently be able to bring up any of the whole array of skills I'd learnt and be able to go back and forth with the interview panel and if they asked me a question, at least I'd be able to talk about it. Second, in my case, it would make my CV stand out because I was coming from a non-data background and make it easier for the employer to forward my application on to the next step of the recruitment process. If you know the role you want to apply to and you've done the research and you know the infrastructure and workflow that's built in within the company that you're applying to, for example, during the research stage of your application process, you might find out that a company uses Tableau over Power BI. Then in that case, of course, focus on Tableau and not Power BI. But in my case, I was applying to a lot of different roles and I needed to be able to generalize my scope of skills and abilities. If you want to start at square one, the absolute basics, I've made a video about the five Excel functions I use the most as a data analyst in my day to day. And I work through a practical example of when I use each of those functions. I'll link that video up there. That's a good stepping stone if you don't know where to start. And from there, there's countless online tutorials and workshops and boot camps that can advance your skills further. Now, the learning I was doing was all self-paced through online resources, watching YouTube videos, tutorials, and online courses. There were three online courses that I did that really helped me build a strong projects portfolio. And we'll dive deeper into the projects portfolio later on in the video. The first course I did was the computer science course offered by Harvard. It's called CS50's Web Programming with Python and JavaScript. There is a precursor to this course, which is called, I think, CS50's Introduction to Web Programming, but I'd done a bit of Python at university, so I skipped that first one and jumped straight into the second one. That course I did, again, isn't inherently designed for data analytics, but it gave a great overview of Python basics, SQL models, JavaScript, and user interfaces. The second course I did was the Python for Data Science course by IBM. That course is split up into different modules and breaks down all the things that you can do with Python, like analyzing data, visualizing data, and machine learning and automation using Python. I actually used the last module of that course when we were trying to automate sections of a weekly publication we do at work and the Python I'd learned there came in handy for that project I was working on at work. The third and last course I did was the SQL for Data Science course, again by IBM. I think this is the course that 
paid me the most dividends, not only in my understanding of SQL, but also helped me in the interview when we were discussing data extraction and communication techniques. That course covered cloud databases, string patterns, data querying, and also covered a bit of data analysis using Python as well. Now you can probably tell that the courses I'd taken were more focused on programming languages, which I'd identified as the weakest part of my skill set. I'd worked with data quite a fair bit during university and internships. We did a lot of data extraction that I could talk about in the interviews. And also while I had technical knowledge of Python and SQL, a fair amount of Python and SQL from university, I didn't really know how they were used in real life corporate and decision making. So that's why I chose to focus my time on working on those programming languages. So the quickest way to become an analyst is to identify the weakest points of your skill set and really work and hone in on them. Moving on to the non-technical skills I worked on. For the remaining two days of the week, I was working on the soft skills that are required for analysts and they're just as important as the technical skills. My background meant that I was already inclined to problem solving and critical and analytical thinking, which are also very important skills to have. And I made this point before, but I'm a huge advocate for the importance of communication skills. This includes both written and verbal communication. I think communication skills are the deciding factor between the analyst that was just about to get the role and the analyst who did get the role. I've had the chance to sit in some recruitment interviews during my time as a data analyst, and the analysts who were hired not only had excellent analytical skills, but they were also able to communicate really, really well and tell a fantastic story. From my experience, that's what I find employers are looking for. They want someone who can deal with their clients with confidence and clarity. I've had so many people reach out to me who are great analysts. Their CVs have more relevant work experience. They're more qualified than I am. They've done master's degrees in analytics and data engineering, and they still aren't able to land a job. That shouldn't be happening. If I was able to land a job, with a degree that really isn't even completely relevant to data analytics, then the limiting factor for those people is the ability to sell yourself, which again boils down to communication. When I was applying for jobs, I figured out that there were two primary ways in which I was selling myself to employers. One was my CV and the other was my LinkedIn profile. An employer sees those two things first. Before they see anything else, those are the two things they see. The secondary way I was selling myself was in the interview. I made an entire video about what I did 24 hours before my data analyst interview and I cover what I did in the months leading up to my interview. So I'm not gonna go into the details about the interview prep that I was doing during those three months. I'll link that video up there if you wanna check that out. Now those first two, your CV and LinkedIn profile need to be absolutely airtight. You can't afford any spelling or grammatical errors in them. One person who sent me his CV, he had a bachelor's degree in computer science, a master's degree in data analytics and cloud computing, three months of experience as a data intern at an insurance company where he built up a fairly strong projects portfolio, but he was still unable to get a job. The only issue I could find with his CV were that there were a few spelling and grammatical errors. Some sentences weren't grammatically correct and some words were spelt incorrectly. I can almost guarantee that he wasn't being hired due to those small errors. If an employer sees that, then they can't confidently let you communicate with their clients because it'll reflect badly on them and the rest of the data team. And also it won't inspire confidence in your clients. That's what I mean by everything has to be airtight. Those minute errors could be the reason that you're not landing a role. And it's not as though the changes that need to be made are difficult. Those are such small changes. I digress. Back to what I was working on. Knowing that communication is very important, I was working on building my communication skills, integrating everything I had learned from the courses I was doing and explaining that to someone who didn't have any technical knowledge. If the person I was explaining to was able to understand what I was teaching them, then a client should be able to understand with no issues at all. There's a book called The Unfair Advantage and it talks about the unfair advantages that people have. An unfair advantage is a condition, asset or circumstance that puts you in a favorable position over others. When I read that book, I started to think about what my unfair advantage was. I wasn't particularly good at the technical skills, there were people far better than I was at 
the technical aspect of things. I didn't have as much industry knowledge as many of the other applicants. I didn't have as much experience. Some of the applicants were older than I was. They had two or three years more experience than I did. I mean, this was my first job out of university. So my aim was to make communication my unfair advantage because there were so many people more qualified than I was applying for the same role. So that's what my week would look like for those three months. Three days learning about the technical skills with a focus on Excel, Power BI, SQL and Python, and the remaining two days working on building my communication skills, presenting what I was learning and being able to deal with any queries about the data that I was presenting. Early on in the video, we briefly mentioned the data analytics portfolio that I was working on curating, and that was mostly done through the online courses while I was studying. A good projects portfolio is a great way to demonstrate to employers the practical side of your skills and experience. This is your chance to show your data visualization, data presentation skills, and your creativity. For me at the time, programming wasn't my strongest suit. I had good technical knowledge, like I mentioned, of Python and SQL, but I hadn't been able to apply them in real life corporate decision making. Oddly for me, some of the standout pieces that I included in my portfolio were financial models that I'd created at university and as investment analyst intern at UBS. I think the reason they were so useful is twofold. One, because I was applying for a financial services firm, so I was able to showcase my understanding of financial models and how they're created. But I was also able to explain how I sourced, cleaned, manipulated, and validated the data that was inputted into those models. Now I did have to analyze the data I'd worked with a little further. I had to create some more relevant graphs and visuals, but those are minor changes that I had to make. I also had a project that I'd worked on during my time at university, which was able to take a large data set and I'd written a neural network regression algorithm, which was able to take that data and use it to predict future values. This is part of what I'd done at university using historical stock prices, which was essentially a more, I don't want to say accurate, but more a more generalized model of extrapolation. The model did need some tweaking to work with a more wider range of data, not just stock prices, but I was able to explain that in the interview. And since we know that there's no way to actually time the stock market, the model wasn't exactly accurate, but I was able to show the work that I'd done. Now, I don't actually have that project to hand because the hard drive it was on failed. So I've sent it off to recovery, fingers crossed, I can get all that data back. One of the best projects I've ever seen as part of someone's portfolio, and this is more relevant to data analytics, was someone had created an interactive vaccine tracker as a dashboard in Power BI. The tracker essentially took publicly available data and on a world map showed how many people were vaccinated for a specific country over the entire populace. The map was color coded by a number of people vaccinated and also had different iterations on how the numbers of infections would go up and down depending on how many more people or less people were vaccinated. There were some rough edges. For example, the source data wasn't right, but he was able to explain in the interview and after the fact that if he had access to the right data sources, how he'd be able to input that data into his model. That was by far one of the best examples of a portfolio project I've ever seen because it's not technically the most difficult project to compute but the relevance of the project at the tail end of the pandemic and his ability to explain how that project would be beneficial in other scenarios is what made that project so great. That's a great example of a project that allowed him to demonstrate his data presentation, data visualization, and technical skills. If you want a one page roadmap on how I would become a data analyst if I had to do it all over again from the beginning, I've taken all the points from this video and added a few more and created a roadmap on how I would become a data analyst if I had to start all over again. There's a free PDF roadmap link at the top of the description. It'll give you an overview of the most important skills and aspects required to be a data analyst, It'll summarize the points we've covered in this video. And it's the quickest way I figured out how to become a data analyst. So personally, those are the steps I'd follow if I had to do it all over again. Well, there you have it. I think I've covered just about everything I did in the three months before I got my role. I can tell you from personal experience, those three months were very, very hectic. And the phrase that looking for a job is a full-time job in and of itself was very, very true. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments down below. And let me know what videos you'd like to see next. If you want a more in-depth dive into any of the points we covered in this video, or you have any specific topics you'd like me to cover, let me know that down below as well. Follow my Instagram if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, leave a like, and I will see you guys in the next one. This is your chance to show your data visualize.
This is your chance to show your data visual data visualization vis, vi, visualization. This is your chance to show your data visual. <sighs> this is your chance to show your data visualization data presentation visual. I can't say visualize visualization after data.